Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is so very nice to meet you. And to all my OGs out there, what's up y'all? So, welcome to our next installment of a Twin Flame Mirror reading. This is a reading that I developed uh, on my own, myself, um, just to get a sense of where the twins are energetically, maybe potentially if they're mirroring each other or if they're not mirroring each other, seeing that as well, and then maybe kind of understanding, you know, bringing some guidance forward toward, for you in terms of your own twin flame journey. I do want to say that I do offer these as um, in personal format. Actually, I just finished a personal twin flame mirror reading for someone. And I love, I, I really love these readings, okay? They're really fantastic. They really help give you a sense of where you are in terms of, you know, between the masculine and feminine energy. Now, I do want to say also that this reading can be used in another format. It doesn't just have to be for twin flames. So if you are in some sort of soulmate or romantic partnership and you'd just like to see where you and your partner are in relation to each other in terms of the relationship, this would work as well. If if you wanted to do this as say like a spiritual check-in to see where your spiritual reality is energetically in terms of where your physical reality is and energetically and maybe how they may be mirroring each other or in going in completely opposite directions potentially that is an excellent idea as well this it all works really well these readings are all of the readings that i offer are extremely versatile okay um so uh, like I said, I just finished doing this reading for a person, uh, uh, as a personal reading. So now I'm getting into the collective energies and I took a moment to really clear the decks and I, I saged the decks so that I could really get a clear, clean slate in terms of the messages that are coming through for the collective. I do want to say though, I have a little bit of a pre-shuffle energy or, or, or message coming from the masculine side. There, there is an energy of the masculine, really the divine masculine really coming forward now understanding a lot of things. I'm hearing he's changing his ways. Um, a number of cards flew out while I was reshuffling the deck. Um, uh, some of them, amongst them being, you know, the King of Wands, the Emperor, the Lovers, um, and like even the High Priestess. So it's like there's an energy of the masculine really coming forward, really, I'm hearing shooting his shot. Okay, ooh, yay, 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 okay. <laughs> Um, but it's like he's he's waking up, he's seeing past the veils of illusion, and he's starting to really come into a, a sense of himself. Now, understand, guys, please, that I when I say him or her, I am in no way speaking to gender. We are talking about energy. Everybody has masculine and feminine energies within, but in all balanced relationships, there is an element of one person embodying more of the masculine energy and another person embodying more of the feminine energy, okay? So then, uh, in terms of our um, pre-shuffle energies, what was coming through was kind of coming through with the feminine. There wasn't as much coming out with the feminine, but the feminine was getting things like the Ten of Swords, where it's like she's needing to put the past behind her. She's really needing to start balancing out and not giving in to her fears and, and, and whatnot, whatever, which is so funny because Emily of, um, of Indigo Moon's uh, here on Indigo Moons, here on YouTube, put out a twin flame mirror reading titled Don't Give In to the Fear or Don't, don't Something About the Illusion or the Fears or Whatnot, Whatever. I, as of, as of this moment that I'm recording this reading, I have purposefully not watched that because I don't want it to influence whatever messages come through here. And so I'm, I'm definitely going to watch it after I finish here. But already I feel like there's a little bit of a, a common message. Um, and that's actually kind of one of the things that came through in the, the reading I just did, the personal reading I just did, it was an energy of needing, for, at least from the feminine point of view, needing to lighten up and needing to start really focusing on unconditional love instead of taking things so seriously and needing to work on meeting the masculine halfway. You know, this is a partnership. This is not about the feminine standing in her, on her, sitting on her throne saying, you absolutely have to come up to this highest standard, even though it's unreasonable for you to 
to actually get there in order for you to align with me. This is not being in perfect alignment. I don't see it that way. I see it as harmony, harmonizing. Okay, you two, even though you're in your whole in your individuality, you are two parts of the same greater whole. And neither one of you are really supposed to be the same, okay? But you are meant to harmonize, which means that you're going to have to meet each other halfway, okay? That is a really big message that I feel like needs to come through for the collective right now. So with all of that said, let's get into the reading here. So I, just so you know, the reading for the collective here on the channel is going to be structured a little bit differently. Obviously, I have these two decks. One is going to symbolize the masculine side, which is this deck on the left. The other is going to symbolize the feminine, which is the deck on the right. And I'm going to get Oracle guidance in a different way than I normally would if this were a private reading. So if this were a private reading, I would be using the animal spirit deck to get a sense of using, uh, getting a sense of the energies between the two of you um, using their relationship spread, which is a spread that they've developed and I, I really love to use. But here for the channel, for the collective, I'm going to get Oracle guidance from uh, varying sources. And last the last one I did back in December, I don't remember which Oracle deck I used for that one, but this time I really feel like I want to get Oracle guidance from the Lightworker Oracle, okay? That may be subject to change, but that's how I feel about it right now. I feel like that might be, that already it feels like that's the best thing to do, go with, but we'll see what happens as we move forward, yeah? So without further ado, let's get into it. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please give us a clear and accurate representations of the divine masculine of the, excuse me, clear and accurate representation of the energies of the Divine Masculine Collective represented by the deck on the left, and give us a clear and accurate representation of the Divine, the energies of the Divine Feminine Collective represented by the deck on the right. And please show us how they are potentially mirroring each other, or maybe not at all. And please bring forward the best guidance that you have for us in terms of this Twin Flame journey and Twin Flame collect, uh, uh, connection at this time. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so I'm being instructed to give this five shuffles for each of you. So we're going to start with the masculine side. And I just want to point out, some of you may be hearing a good amount of construction that's going on across the street. One, I do live across the street from building 144. And for those of you that have been on this journey for a while, two, you have probably heard that number in it, it as it's uh, it's very highly very uh, very much associated with the twin flame journey three some people believe that there are actually 144,000 twin physical twins on the planet others believe that it's just the frequency of unconditional love this is four either way whatever you believe it's associated with the twin flame journey and i just so happen to live across the street from it <laughs> but they are rebuilding the building across the street they tore it down this summer and now they're building it back up they're and they're working really well they're working hard it's construction is going well so it's kind of ironic <laughs> but then again i firmly do not i am someone that firmly does not believe in coincidences i think i feel that everything happens for a reason so Take that as you will, yeah? And this is five for the Divine Masculine Collective. Okay. Let's cut the deck here. Boop. All right. Divine Masculine, your energies are set. Let's get into the Feminine here. So we're going to give this five shuffles for the Divine Feminine. And then we're going to start with you, love. Yeah? Here we go. One. For the Divine Feminine Collective. Two, three, for the Divine Feminine Collective, four, and five. All right. 
right, ladies and gents. Oop. Starting with the Divine Feminine. Overall energy is the Page of Pentacles. All right, so Divine Feminine, you are reaching a whole new level of existence. Um, yeah. <laughs> what I just heard is you're really learning how to strut your stuff. And I feel like this is definitely pulling you out of your comfort zone. You're entering this new realm of reality, this new understanding. You're coming into this new space, this new energetic space where you are really needing to learn to embody unconditional love. And for a lot of you, or maybe even some of you, that is a really hard lesson to learn because you have, in fact, been coming... Or, or, or approaching this situation, approaching this journey, approaching this twin flame connection from a sense of strong conditions. And this is not something that you need to feel bad about. This is not something that you need to beat yourself up over because ultimately you had to go through that in order to really truly understand what unconditional love is and how to really express yourself in that way. But first and foremost, you need to learn how to love yourself unconditionally the only way that you can love someone else unconditionally is if you first love yourself unconditionally okay and that's what i really feel like is coming through here with this page of pentacles in this new level that you are you're um stepping into okay ah yes underneath that is the two of cups okay this is the balance of masculine and feminine within this is also the the balance or the, the relationship between you and your divine masculine. And what I'm getting with this is you're learning how to love him, i.e. the ma divine masculine, whether that's a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to continue to use the pronouns of him or her, regardless of where you may fall on the spectrum. But you're learning how to love him differently by learning to love yourself differently. Underneath the two of cups, yes, ma'am, you've got the ten of swords. And underneath the Ten of Swords <laughs> is the Page of Wands. The Page of Wands is an energy of messages, sure, but re-identifying yourself. I do kind of, I, I, okay, well, I'll say this because it, it, I heard it clearly, so I'm going to say it. You, I, in, in terms of the, the Page of Wands being, in my opinion, it could very well be a minor arcana version of the Hermit. And for those of you that are familiar with the Hermit energies, you, you recognize or you know what I'm talking about. The Hermit being an energy of going within, going on a deep soul, deep diving of your soul, of, of yourself, and, and finding answers within, going on a pilgrimage, a, a solo journey, whatnot, whatever. Um, but in terms of that, the Page of Wands could also even represent some sort of identity crisis. And that's kind of, I, I heard that clearly. So I kind of feel like for some of you, you are in fact going through a little bit of an identi identity crisis. It is definitely pulling you out of your comfort zone. But if you don't see it yet, you'll see it later on, like later on down the journey, not necessarily later on in the reading, but later on in the journey for you, that it's actually closing out all of the painful elements and the real strife that you've been struggling with in terms of loving yourself unconditionally and ultimately loving your divine masculine unconditionally okay that's beautiful doesn't mean it's easy but, <laughs> but it's beautiful all right cool so let's get into the rest of this here for the divine feminine collective first set of surrounding energies you have the three of wands well good you are you are well on your path and you're doing the right thing regardless of where you've been in the past regardless of what has happened up until now you are in fact on the right path you are in fact uh, wor working through the journey quite well and your ships are definitely coming in and i really do feel like with you being in this new in this page of pentacles energy of reaching some sort of um level up i also kind of want to say realignment here that is also helping your ships to come in but i don't think you really realize it just yet okay and i just heard different alignment is bringing different different circumstances for you so in terms of that it's really closing out some really toxic um low level energies that have still been running rampant within the connection okay three of wands is coupled with the Seven of Pentacles. Well, the Seven. I've done two other personal readings today. I did a. I did a. Um, 
I did a freestyle reading and then I did a, twi a, a mirror reading and now I'm here. And the seven of pentacles just keeps coming out. And every time it comes out, I am getting this energy of Einstein's definition of, ins of, of insanity in terms of doing something over and over and over again the same way, but expecting a different result. Come on, focus. Oh, my camera's being mean to me, guys. But <laughs> anyway, so there's an energy of putting that to rest, stopping the cycle and saying, okay, look, obviously this is not giving me the right this is not giving me the outcome that I that I desire or that I even want or that it is, is even necessary in terms of this journey that I'm on. So I've got to switch it up. I've got to I've got to I've got to change the game. I've got to step my game up. I've got to I've got to I've got to I've got to change something. I've got to change my approach. But ultimately, the path that you've been on up until now has been leading you to this realization. So I don't want anyone to think low of yourselves because of this because you're i'll say it this way because you're finally agreeing to change your approach or at least even if you're not necessarily agreeing just yet you are finally recognizing maybe even admitting to yourself that you need to change your approach and that's what was needed this whole time is what i just heard okay Second set of surrounding energies for the Divine Feminine Collective in this Twin Flame connection, we have the Nine of Pentacles. Now, the really the only reason that you are able to make this switch, and it does kind of feel like a 180, okay? Um, the only reason you're, all, you're, you're able, I, I kind of want to say allowed to, but I also don't want to say that. The only, I really want to say able to make this 180 is because you have found a sense of stability and independence within which has all also been a part of the journey so for any masculines out there that are watching this right now and have observed a major change or a major shift within your divine feminine it's because she has really reached this sense of independence and autonomy and no longer really requires that much of um, of an external validation, if at all. And it may be in some in some cases, it may be your feminine. Um, oh, I lost what I was going to say there. OK, never mind. It wasn't important. But ultimately, the the message here is that the reason why your feminine or the reason why you divine feminine are able to make this switch is because you finally find you finally found some sense of security and autonomy and independence within yourself and that is an excellent excellent thing nine of pentacles is coupled with oh yes look at that that queen of wands this in my opinion in the minor arcana is a depiction of the divine feminine mainly because wands is representative of spirit spirit spirituality and passion and creativity and whatnot whatever but mostly it's its association with spirit okay why there we go but here you go it's like you're you divine feminine you have finally been able to step into this true power of the queen of wands oh that's what i wanted to say so with you divine feminine with you stepping into this sense of autonomy and independence and 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 magnetism it's like you no longer need any sort of validation in the external so now you can actually look at yourself and say oh wow i see how i've been injecting resistance or i see how i've been creating strife or turmoil here and so i'm kind of all right well cool i'm i'm really confident in myself now and i understand myself better and i don't care what other people have to say so i can admit to myself that yeah all right i need to switch this up i need to change my approach or i need to be a little more loving or a little more compassionate to my masculine out there because i know he's trying i'm trying so i so obviously he's trying right and if you don't quite understand that or you don't quite see that, you can rest assured, if this is your true twin, if you're really truly in this twin flame dynamic and you're actually actively doing the work, so is your so is your divine masculine because ultimately you're influencing him and also he's influencing you, whether you want to admit that yet or not. I'm not sure a lot of you are ready to admit that yet, but at least you're ready to admit that you're doing the work, right? Okay. <laughs>
Yeah, that's a topic of contention, whether or not you want to really look at the fact that actually everything that the divine masculine has been doing and expressing himself and all the ways that he's been triggering you has actually been in service of you reaching this. Nine of Pentacles, Queen of Wands. But again, if you're not ready to admit that yet, don't worry about it. It'll come in time, but that is the truth, whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay, so your challenge, Divine Feminine, in this Twin Flame connection, currently, as of this reading right now. Oh, and I should have said this before. I'm so sorry, guys. But yes, these readings, I'm doing these, these Twin Flame um, mirror readings just about monthly, but they are timeless, okay? So whenever you watch this, and it resonates for you, then keep it. Like I'm not, I'm specifically, I'm like, I'm saying, I'm gonna say it's for January, okay, but that's just to keep things in order, all right? Just so that you, there's some sense of order here, but it doesn't mean it only has to resonate for January. This can resonate at any time, all right? So your current challenge, Divine Feminine, Divine Feminine, in terms of the moment that this reading resonates for you. Ooh, the lovers. Oh, oh, honey, I know what this says. This is saying that the challenge for you is to recognize that you truly do love him, don't you? I mean, that was a challenge for me. I really had to work. I mean, I didn't work that hard. I didn't consciously work that hard to get myself into an energy where I could admit that I still really love him. <laughs> My twin, like, I let, let me tell you, I love that man. I love everything about him, okay? And it's just like, and I am, especially since I spent all of 2019 in this really, really toxic energy of resentment and hatred and fear and anxiety and pain and, and just, ugh, just ick. And it was, it, 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 it if for, if, I mean, I would have rather, a, a snowflake, a snowflake, had a better chance in hell than anyone would have gotten of hearing me admit how much I love him. And that was what was making me so damn angry. The fact that we went through all of that and I was being triggered so much and I felt so victimized. Yes, I was playing the victim for fairly good reason, but ultimately, okay, what not, whatever. We're gonna call a spade a spade, right? But the reason why I was so dang, damn angry most of the time was the fact that I went, we went through all that and I still loved that man. And it wasn't until the end of last year that I was finally, I finally broke enough. My ego subsided enough where I could actually sit down and say to myself, oh my God, I still want to be with him. And I still really do love him. Well, Divine Feminine, that is your challenge right now. Recognizing the connection between the two of you. And approaching the connection from true unconditional love. Meaning that regardless of what the connection looks like between the two of you right now, you two may not even be talking to each other. You may not even be close to, to, to being willing to even think about talking to each other. But you still love each other. And you can still hold love for the person. That is what unconditional love is. Regardless of what the circumstances are, regardless of where you may find yourselves on the journey, regardless of what may be going on between the two of you or what may not be going on between the two of you, still being able to look at that person and appreciate them for who they are and love them for who they are and still want the best for them, still want them to be happy, regardless of what that takes, that is unconditional love. That doesn't mean that you're not angry. That doesn't mean that you're not hurt. That doesn't mean that there isn't still a level of resentment there, but you still love them. That is unconditional love. The lovers is coupled with mm, the page of swords. Check it out, y'all. You know what the page of swords is saying here? Truth, honesty, like no bullshit, like no sugar coating. Like the Page of Swords doesn't even have the maturity to finesse or sugarcoat anything or to beat around the bush. The Page of Swords is asking you to see this, to be completely bluntly and brutally honest with yourself about this situation. And you know what that means specifically? Being completely brutally honest with yourself 
about your involvement in the situation. Not just sitting here talking about, oh, my masculine did this and he's a toxic nah, 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 and he's a meh, 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 nah, meh, meh, meh. Girl, what did you do in the situation? Where do you fall in the situation? What bullshit have you done in this situation, honey? This is a two-way street, my friend. It's not all the masculine's fault. It's not all, well, it's not all your fault, that's true, but it damn sure isn't all the masculine's fault. Your challenge right now is to see things for what it, they truly are, yes, to really seek the absolute truth in this scenario, okay? Because the Page of Swords is the seeker, is the sentry, is the one that goes out and gathers the information, right? And the Page of Swords, if balanced, is completely 100% unbiased. I mean, a fact is a fact. I mean, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to sit here and tell you who's right or wrong. I'm giving you the straight up facts. It is this, that, this and that. That's all. That was that was my job. That was all I was commissioned for. Uh, the, giving you narrative is beyond my pay grade. So, <laughs> says the page of swords. I'm giving you the straight up facts. Be honest with yourself, divine feminine, and cut away the illusion. All right. All right. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Divine Feminine, in this collective connection here you have. Well, the Four of Swords. Looks like someone needs a timeout. That's what this feels like, Divine Feminine. And it's not for any other reason other than for you to collect yourself, to give yourself the time and the space to be brutally honest with yourself about this. This is a situation, this is an energy in which you are being asked to go to your room. <laughs> Ooh, yikes. For some of you, you're being asked to go to your room and think about what you've done. Or more specifically, think about how you've acted here. I know I'm guilty of that. I had to do the same thing, y'all. I'm not, I'm not sitting here trying to preach to you like I'm some immaculate being. Oh, hell no. Far from it, actually. And that's coming from a Virgo rising. And let me tell you, Virgos don't like to be wrong. And Virgos don't like to be seen as anything other than less than perfect. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sitting here telling you, it's time for you to go to your respective space, to your respective corners, and really, really meditate. Get past the ego bullshit and really feel what you what is your truth here all right because it's only going to serve you forget like take the masculine out of the equation this is not this is not for you to like this is not for the masculine to feel validated this is for your own damn self right for your own peace of mind for your own sanity for your own healing and growth and expansion four of swords is coupled with Say it with me now, the five of cups. I understand this has hurt you. I understand, girl, I've been there. And there, and I can't, I can't honestly say to you, even though at this point I'm in a much better place in terms of the connection, it just on my own self energetically, I can't say to you that there aren't still some things that don't like that don't rub me the wrong way, that don't make me feel bad or feel sad or, or whatever, not, or whatever, but the reason why you're needing to go to your go to your room and really like meditate or contemplate is so that you can get past this heartbreak because i mean i'm just going to be brutal i'm going to be cutthroat about this me both me and emily of indigo moon's healing we are some cutthroat bitches we are not going to let you sit in your own shit at least not for too long but there are some of you out there that are literally crying over spilled milk right now and you need to just suck it up and work on getting over it now. And y'all know, if you follow me, if you've been watching Morning Coffee, which is a daily reading that I do, there was a, certain, there was a situation um, a few weeks ago in which some, I was talking about the twin flame journey and I was talking about how I, I, how I, I was saying how I've come, finally come to terms with or allowed myself to come to admit how I truly feel. 
and someone took the opportunity to 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 advise me that I should just like you know feel what I'm feeling and then basically get over it and get out of there because they didn't want to see me dealing with something in the in, in to the extent that they had and uh, you know and I responded to it I understand where they were coming from there and I understand that it wasn't necessarily meant to be malicious and all that. And they were just coming from a place of love and care for me and wanting and not wanting me to be hurt. And I appreciate that. But I am. But one of my response to that was don't I don't think it's a good idea to ever come into somebody's space and tell them to get over something. Just just get over it already. So y'all know. When I say at this point, y'all need to get over it, you know that I'm not trying to diminish anything of what you felt. But at this point, some of you are literally just crying over spilt milk. You are keeping, you are literally holding yourself in this space of sorrow when it's not necessary anymore. You got to let this go. You got to let the pain and the hurt and the resentment go. I understand. I mean, I'm having trouble really even putting that out there because that is a very sensitive topic. I'm not asking and I'm not saying that anyone needs to move any quicker than is natural for them. But, uh, but there is a holding pattern here within the Divine Feminine Collective that is not making anything better for yourselves. At some point, you are going to have to be brutally honest with yourself and start to admit that, okay, maybe I should start letting some of this go now. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to move because that I'm really triggering some people with that. And I, I'm not, I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm not, tr I'm not trying to come into your space and tell you how to handle your existence or your situation, but whatever. I've said my piece. <laughs> Let's get into the masculine collective now. Let's look at what's going on for you, masculine. Overall energy, we're kicking you off with the magician. I know that shit is right, masculine. And this is actually falling right in line with what I was picking up on for you in the pre-shuffle. Or I mean, I wasn't even trying to have a pre-shuffle, but y'all were just like, I'm here, I'm ready, we're doing this. Okay. The magician manifesting creating this very much as above so below energy bringing your spiritual reality into your physical reality and masculine you are the master of the physical domain so this is beautiful obviously obviously it's not going to look the way the fem like the feminines it's not meant to whereas the feminine is the master of the spiritual domain the the ether you ma i'm sorry i'm sorry where the feminine did I say that correctly? I don't know. The feminine is the master of the spiritual domain, the ether and whatnot, whatever. You masculine, you are the master of the 3D, of the physical. And you two complement each other. Or at least you're meant to, all right? But you still got to meet each other halfway. Underneath the magician, you've got the four of cups. And what I'm getting specifically for this is like, you're not about to miss this opportunity again. Four of Cups, underneath the Four of Cups is the Four of Wands. Fucking right. Underneath the Four of Wands, the Three of Wands. Looky here, we've got our mirroring so far, guys. Okay. So whereas feminine, you needed reassurance that everything that you've had that's been going on in your journey right now, up until now, has been a part of the path. Masculine, you are getting on the path. You're you're getting with the program here. You have and, and what I'm getting with this is very much the exact opposite of what the feminine is going through here. So masculine, you have the um, the spiritual foundation to not allow yourself to miss this opportunity again, to let this get away from you again, to release some sense or some feelings of rejection or unrequited love, whatnot, whatever, or maybe even boredom because you have this spiritual foundation or you have this creative foundation even with the four of wands okay excellent all right so let's get into the rest of your energy here masculine first set of surrounding energies for you in this twin flame collection connection you have the six of cups 
So you are very much aware of this relationship, this soulmate bond, this soulmate tie with your divine feminine. Now, come on, why aren't you, my camera, of course my camera wants to freak out on me like this. I mean, I'm just like, hey guys. So as I was screwing with the camera because it wasn't focusing for me, somehow the recording stopped and I didn't realize it until I got all the way through the masculine's energy. And I was in the zone too, y'all. Like it was great. Unfortunately, I, I don't, I'm not going to be able to recreate what I said exactly as I said it before. And unfortunately, you're not going to have the privilege or the excitement of watching me pull the cards here and there, like right here. But ultimately the message still stands. Hopefully you'll believe me. We're in good faith that this is not contrived. I mean, you watched me, you watched me shuffle it in the beginning, but whatever. So we're going to talk about this. So I left off on the six of cups. Okay. And the six of cups was talking about here. What I was getting from that was an energy of, um, the masculine, you divine masculine recognizing the connection between you and your divine feminine. And, and I was also picking up on karma, like the pick, the karmic ties or the karmic reality between you and your divine feminine and doing whatever it is you need to do to clear that away even if that means that ultimately you don't end up with your divine feminine right now that's not really the focus the focus here is just about clearing the karmic ties between the two of you right and then ultimately that doesn't mean that you don't want to be with her but right now it's like all right let's just get through the energies of clearing away all this karmic bullshit between us and then we'll focus on maybe if we can be together or not and then what came out after that was the five of swords and the five of swords is literally that karmic energy i was also picking up that for some of you divine masculines there is an enemy there is an enemy okay but there's <laughs> there's an energy of getting to your divine feminine or being with your divine feminine against all odds because there is definitely a recognition of the connection a soul bond a soul tie between you and your divine feminine okay cool so then after that we had the hierophant and with the hierophant comes an energy of you divine masculine stepping into what i was describing as your high priest power whereas the divine feminine has been in her high priestess uh, power or high priestess state for quite some time now you divine masculine are now actually stepping into your high priest power okay and really embodying especially with this magician energy here of as above so below embodying that energy of um your spiritual nature your true divine masculine nature and bringing that into the physical now with you standing in your high priest power this doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to look like you're walking around here in like full-on priest garb or monk garb or like maybe even like looking like a shaman and all that shit nah 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 that's not what we're talking about here you're still probably walking around here looking like a badass, looking like the rock star that you are, but you're embodying a higher sense of divine wisdom and understanding of the universe, the laws of the universe universe, and whatnot, whatever, and really bringing that to the surface and living your life from that point of view, okay? So then the high, high I'm sorry, the hierophant, I wanted to say the high priest, which is technically what this is, but the hierophant is coupled with the three of cups. Now, the three of cups represents and energies of the 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 balance and harmony and union of body mind and spirit okay so this is just reiterating the energies of you divine masculine being in this high priest energy or this high priest mindset of really um, allowing yourself to flow with the laws of the universe now with that to that point what i want to i want to say and what i want to point out here is that divine feminine you are the master of the spiritual domain and the divine masculine you are the master of the physical domain okay so that does so with that said you're bringing your spiritual nature your spiritual reality into this form and embodying it the best way you can in terms of being the master of the physical so being the teacher being the high priest and now actually this is something that came through that i actually wasn't wasn't picking up on before i didn't say before but this is physical proof divine feminine of the fact that 
the masculine is in fact or has been teaching you even though you may not want to admit it divine feminine right this is that confirmation and yes you have been teaching the divine masculine as well but also a lot of what the divine mass wow <laughs> I have this song called For You coming to my head by a band called Oak and Ash. You should check them out. They're really awesome. But actually, the lyrics of that song go, All I do, do it for you. I do it for you, right? So it, there's an energy here of the masculine kind of embodying that teaching element that you need or that you have needed to certain extent to in order for you divine feminine to get to the to get to your true alignment, to get to your highest sense of the high priestess energy. And now the divine masculine it, in your energy divine masculine in your current surrounding energies, you're really showing up or embodying this high priest energy or this hierophant energy but it's happening on a conscious level now where you've always been in this energy but it's happening consciously at this point okay okay so then masculine divine masculine your challenge started off with the seven of cups and with that i was starting to get an energy of for some of you divine masculines out there there's still an element of needing to weed out a bunch of karmic partners whether that be other feminines um you know that maybe have been romantic and again that doesn't have to that doesn't have to have anything to to do with gender okay but that's the energy because you are more in the masculine you would attract a feminine towards you right so that could be karmic partners relationships fuck buddies that kind of energy it could also be friends business situations work colleagues stuff like that maybe even family members that could be something that you're having to weed out here but ultimately what this really feels like for you regardless of what the circumstances are individually to you right divine masculine what this really is embodying or it's it's speaking to this right here with the six of cups and the five of swords you clearing out the karmic energy that stands in the in the way of you and your feminine really truly connecting to each other all right with that comes the queen of pentacles and what i got with the queen of pentacles again okay sure this could be a karmic partner this could be a wife whatnot whatever or like a husband that is of feminine nature okay whatever but also ultimately what i really got from this the strongest thing i got from this was this is the divine feminine your divine your true divine feminine because the divine feminine has very much been in an energy lately for the longest time to be quite honest collectively speaking the divine feminine has been in an energy of knowing exactly what her worth is so your challenge right now divine masculine is trying to figure out in a very healthy way, I want to say, trying to figure out how you can show up for your divine feminine and give her the things that you know and she knows that she's worthy of. How can you show up for your divine feminine in a way that is congruent? Congruent? Is that the right word? Oh gosh, I don't know. But in a way that aligns with what you both know, that both of you, quite honestly, that both of you are worthy of. And that's a, that, and this feels, it's a strong challenge, Divine Masculine, but it feels like a challenge that you are really ready and willing to even, I even kind of feel a bit of excitement for you there in meeting that challenge because you know you can and you know you, know you can do it, you know you can do it well and you know that it's going to just like, <laughs> that I'm not saying that you guys, that is so graphic. <laughs> It's just going to make your divine feminine wet as fuck. You know what I mean? Like, it's just going to turn her on so much because it's something that you have, that she has wanted from you for so long. And the fact that you're now ready and are in the mindset to like really do that for her, man, it's just, ooh, wee. Mm. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> I mean, this ain't, none of this is for kids, but I'm not, I'm trying not to be too vulgar. You know what I mean? Even though I have one dirty ass mind. Anyway, we're going to move forward. So <laughs> Divine Masculine, your closing message, potential outcome started off with the all gifted. And what this is saying is this is you being in the ready to be, or being in the ready, being in the energy to be ready to show yourself for who you truly are, to accept yourself for who you truly are, to accept your gifts and your talents outside of the physical realm and, and really let 
that be? So what does that mean outside of the physical realm? Uh, psychic ability, your extrasensory perception, your magic, your magic with the magician, yes? And a lot of you have really been, have really hidden from that, to be honest, because it's not accepted by the 3D world. It's uh, magic isn't real. Oh, honey, let me tell you, magic very much is real. And you recognize that and you embody that. And there is also what was coming through with this all gifted energy was an energy of you not really caring, not giving a flying fuck what anyone else has to say about you stepping into this high priest power. And I even we even went into a narrative of like, you know, well, I was feeling like some of you, there is a small portion of you that are of in, of you in the divine masculine collective that are kind of just starting to breach the surface of this high priest power. And so your your ego is kind of flaring up a little bit, talking about, ooh, like you were kind of cringing a little bit every time I would say you're stepping into this high priest power because it's like, oh God, what are like, oh God, what are my friends gonna think? What are my family gonna think? Ooh, I'm not so comfortable with that 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 uh, that uh, title yet. And blah blah blah. Okay, that's natural. It, I mean, and like I said, you were just you're you're just now starting to breach the surface there. So there's a little bit of ego balancing that you need to do there. But there are some other others of you that are well into that energy, and you're like, fuck what my friends say, fuck what my family says, fuck what everyone else says about it. Like if you don't like it, you can kick rocks. Like I straight up don't give a shit, homie. Like I'm a spiritual gangster. You don't know. Like it's it, it, and it was that energy. It's like, yo, step to me. You got something to say, then fucking say it. Like come at me, bro. Like what you got? And yo, it's like the energy. You know that meme where um it's like it's SpongeBob and it says the caption says when people think I'm all spiritual and shit, but they don't know that I used to be a gangster. Try me, ho. It's, it's that kind of energy. It's that kind of confidence in yourself to to stand your ground, listen to what your heart is telling you and embody it. Listen to what your higher self is telling you to allow yourself to be a physical embodiment of your higher self. And then I pulled the card that couples, that's coupling the all gifted and it's none other than the king of swords. There you go. Boop. That's all you need right there. Because that King of Swords energy is the truth, is authenticity, is honesty, is seeing something as it truly is. It's also a defensive energy, to be quite honest. It's you defending yourself, defending your spiritual gangster status, not being afraid or ultimately getting to the point where you're not afraid to call yourself a spiritual gangster, to call yourself a spiritual being having a physical existence or a fierce physical experience, to stand firm, stand tall in that, to protect yourself in that energy, but also to protect your feminine in that energy. Because quite frankly, y'all, if this is, if you are in a true twin flame dynamic, then y'all are meant to be spiritual gangsters together. Spiritual rock stars, if you even want to call it that. We're here to change the world, y'all, and we're going to do it whether you like it or not. Oh, <laughs> So that's what I had for you, um, Divine Masculine. I, again, I apologize that you didn't get to see me pull the cards like individually. Um, but I'm going to say, I like the way I described this better the second time around than I did the first time. So hey, everything happens for a reason, right? Excellent. I'm going to get your Oracle Guidance now to close out your reading for this month for the Twin Flame Collective. And we're definitely sticking with the Lightworker Oracle. All right, all right, all right. This is a great reading. And I'm going to be honest with you. I really do feel like there has been a massive, massive shift within the Twin Flame Collective because even the last reading I did back in December was, I even titled that one of the best, the best reading to date. I mean, I can't reuse that title now, nor would I, would I, do I, is it really necessary? But this is, this is an excellent reading. There is a lot of really good shifts that are happening within the Twin Flame Collective right now. And I'm, I'm really quite proud of all of us, to be quite honest. All right, last shuffle here. We really do need to be proud of ourselves and give ourselves a pat on the back because we all have come very, very far, especially in the two years that I've been, you know, doing these. Oh, shit, that's right. Hold on. Wait a second. Thank you, spirit. Wait, you guys, there's more. Um, I will say, but to, to, finish the, to finish my statement, 
in the two years that I've been doing readings here on YouTube, on my channel, obviously, um, for those of you that know the OGs, I stopped doing specific twin flame readings and even this twin flame mirror readings for quite some time because I was trying to get, I was really trying to like divorce myself from the whole situation, which obviously that was never going to happen. But anyway, um, we really should be proud of ourselves because we have all come very, very far. But looky here, and this happened the last time. It was that serendipitous last time. But um, there are some cards underneath the three of wands in the divine masculine's uh, energy that I wanted, that spirit wants people to see. Underneath the three of wands is none other than the lovers. And underneath the lovers is the ace of swords. Okay. So what I was speaking to about, um, and I even think the wheel of fortune just peeked at me, but what I was speaking to earlier about the divine masculine, you knowing that, um, being well aware of this connection here, and being on the path in terms of it, even the lovers came out as like that pre-shuffle explosion that was just like the masculine saying, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm doing this, this is happening. Like I'm showing up for this because I I, I know it's right and I, I know I'm meant to be part of this and I want to be here. Like this is you actively being, stepping into your role here, Divine Masculine. And so there, and the lovers was on the bottom of the deck at that point. And so here we have it again, especially with the Ace of Swords, that's a really good sign. But feminines, feminines, you have got to leave the past behind. Ten of Swords. The, the masculine is showing up and he's doing his work. And for a lot of you, he's doing his work on his own because he knows right now that you are not in a place for him to, to approach you, to step to you, to even really talk to you. That may, granted, that may be of his own doing, whatever. He's aware of it, but he's doing his work. And the more that you hold on to the resentment, the anger, the fear, the shame, all of that stuff, you hold yourself, <coughs> excuse me, see, I'm starting to choke up because y'all don't even want to admit this to yourselves. But the more you hold on to that, the more you hold, you hold yourselves in this holding pattern of just being stuck. And you're going to wonder why you're not experiencing anything, why you're not seeing anything, why you're not getting the nudges from spirit to move towards him or her or whatnot, whatever. You know what I mean? It's because you are holding on to the past. You are literally crying over spilled milk and you got to stop that shit because it's only going to get in your way. Okay. Thank you, spirit, for reminding me of that. I'm really, really glad you did because I completely forgot. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give this one more shuffle and then we'll get your Oracle guidance. All righty, kids. Let's see what we've got for you. Whoop, there it is. Card number 34, hold your center, which does boil down to a seven. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> hold your center. Have you been rushing out to meet others, need, uh, um, to meet others, trying to bend or accommodate their needs at the expense of your own well-being and inner at peace? Now you are to strengthen your own energy, your own boundaries, to find your ground, firmly place your feet there, and do not move. Feel your feet anchoring you like a beautiful tree. Let yourself experience quiet certainty as you hold your center with commitment, courage, and consciousness. You are learning to trust in your own instincts, to take your own journey without comparison to the life path of another. There is no need to become disheartened or distracted by comparisons or judgments. The earth needs your light, which can only come from you. You will offer so much less if you try to make it match your beauty. Uh, yes, if you, you will offer so much less if you try to make it match your beauty to what you perceive to be the beauty of another. Um, I don't think that's proper grammar. I think it's supposed to say you will, you will offer so much less if you try to make your beauty match what you perceive to be the beauty of another. But whatever. Many souls who are different and unique were not understood, acknowledged, and valued for whom they were as children. Instead, they were encouraged to conform, to change, to be other than their true self in order to be loved. This can be a hard pattern to break, yet the time is here for you to love and honor yourself as yourself. You are beautiful. You do not need to change for another. You certainly do not need to change for the divine. Or for that, for that matter, you certainly don't need to change for your 
divine feminine or your divine masculine. Word up. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. You certainly do not need to change for the divine. You are being encouraged instead to distill your essence to become even more of you. Hold your center now and do not be rattled by any other through intimidation, confrontation, doubt, jealousy, or fear. To quote, hold your center means you accept your innate value and worth, your right to exist and thrive and accept the love that created you as you in order to fulfill your divine destiny. This oracle brings you confirmation. You are on the right path and both twins got that. Both twins got the three of wands. So both of you are on the right path. Actually, that's really the only mirroring you got here. Yep. Beautiful. That's still beautiful. I mean, you did, be, both of you got a four. Divine Feminine, you got the Four of Swords. Divine Masculine, you got the Four of Cups and the Four of Wands. But the true mirroring here is the Three of Wands, okay? You are on the right path. You do not need to collapse into fear or doubt to ease old guilt or make others more comfortable. It is not selfish or, quote, hard of you to be strong. You can hold yourself in high esteem and be gentle and loving to others whilst absolutely refusing to accept any behavior, belief, or attitude of another that would tear you down or cast you into doubt or self-hatred. As part of your spiritual training, your soul learned to be open, to receive guidance, and channel healing. This is what you need to be able to do to function as a healer, channel, and light worker. You had to be sensitive, receptive, and open. Now is the time to balance that with resilience, strength, and even some divine stubbornness. Refusing to give up who you are whilst remaining open to guidance is the balance of loving wisdom necessary to grow yourself as a divine, unique individual in a world that often fears true, ident true individuality simply because it cannot be easily controlled. Hmm. Fancy that. <laughs> Holding your center doesn't mean that you no longer surrender. Instead, you consciously choose to surrender into divine love and grow more empowered. You are here to shine a light, to be the lighthouse for others. The lighthouse doesn't ask for permission to shine. It stands still, shines faithfully, and those who need it are guided by its light to safety. Do not lose faith in yourself, beloved soul. You know who you are. Be strong. Honor your inner beauty and your personal boundaries. You need to feel safe in your ability to say no as much as you need to know that you will say yes when your heart guides you to do so. Be true to you. Beautiful. Beautiful. So there you have it, kids. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Congratulations to you guys. You really, really, all of us, we really should be proud of ourselves because we have come so far. Okay. I want to point out though that um, <laughs> this is so cool and super synchronistic, but I want to point out the video ended you guys can't see this but the and because i've edited it and the the numbers are different now but the video ended the first time at 34 minutes and 34 seconds look at what card we have in our guidance card number 34 Boop. everything happens for a reason there are no such things as circ as uh, uh what is it coincidences there is no such thing as coincidences I love you guys so very much. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to, well, if you're watching this over the weekend, if not, I hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are in your life. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next mirror reading next month. Yeah? Take care. Bye.